Mayor, at this time, I'd like to start the regular meeting of the Elmwood Park Mayor and Council for May 7th, 2015 at 8 p.m. On roll call, Council Members Catamagna. Here. Coletti. Here. Martino. Here. Catagano. Here. Monsino. Here. Dombrowski. Here. Mayor Mola. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Will everyone please rise for a prayer and flag salute? O oh God, our Father, we ask you to bless our meeting with we trust in your fatherly care and protection. <clears throat> Please remove all selfishness and prejudice from our hearts and plant them in the keen sense of justice and a greater love for you and our neighbor. Guide us in our deliberations so our decisions will always please you and bring peace and happiness to our community. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Whereas Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of the State of New Jersey requires the commencement of every meeting, a statement by the presiding officer, now therefore be advised that the meeting requires that this meeting have been met by posting an annual notice in the record of Hackensack, the Herald News of Woodland Park, and by posting such notice in the office of the borough clerk as well as in the public place within the municipal building and notifying interested citizens. Said notice was posted on January 1, 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this uh, meeting is... Uh, uh, going to be on cable, we have our, our uh, gentleman here took, uh, taking the, the, the pictures of the councils, so we will have that our videographer, and uh, it'll be on cable vision, channel 77. It'll also, this is a new one, it's on Verizon channel, channel 40, so cable vision 77, Verizon channel 40, Tuesday at 12 noon, <coughs> Thursday at 4 p.m., Friday at 10 a.m., and obviously you can get it on our own website when you choose. Thank you. Mayor, at this time we'll move on to the approval of minutes from the April 2nd, 2015 regular meeting and the April 23rd, 2015 executive session. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Moved so by moved. Mr. Vonsino. Second. Second by Mr. Petit, uh, uh, Martino. Martino. <laughs> on roll call, council members. Catamagna? Mm -hmm. Yes. Coletti? Yes. Martino? Yes. Pettigano? Yes. Bonsino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, this evening um, we have a resolution appointing a new police officer. Resolution R-157-15, appoint police officer Bernadette Yates to the Elmwood Park Police Department. Be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elmwood Park that the following name be and is hereby appointed as a police officer in the Elmwood Park Police Department, Bernadette Yates of Irvington, New Jersey. Be it further resolved that said appointment is in accordance with the intergovernmental transfer process as promulgated by the New Jersey Civil Service Commission, and be it further resolved that remuneration is set at a rate of $43,497 effective May 7, 2015, in accordance with the current PBA collective bargaining agreement. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Mr. Vonsino, second. Second. Mr. Catamania, discussion? Call the roll, please. On roll call, council members Catamagna? Yes. Coletti? Abstain. Martino? Yes. Pettigano? Yes. Bonsino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, at this time, I would uh, ask that the Elmwood Park Police Department escort in our newest police officer, <coughs> Police Officer Yates. If everyone would please rise for the honor guard. I would ask that Mayor Mola and Police Commissioner Bonsino please step down from the dais and that the Yates family join us for her installation. Everyone else may be seated. Thank you. 
Yeah, do the important stuff first, Keith. <laughs> At this time, I would like the camera to at least take a picture of all our police officers who is here. Uh, every time we install or, or give a raise to any police department, we have a good contingent of our police officers attend our meeting, and it makes us uh, feel good and it makes you look good. So thank you for coming. We really appreciate it. And and Bernadette. Congratulations, good health, do a good job, we know you will. Chief? Any comments from any of the council? Yes, Mayor, if I may. Or, Lou? Uh, just, uh, Bernadette, publicly, we'll have to look at you to our police department. Wish you nothing but the best as you take this next step in your uh, law enforcement career. Thank you, welcome aboard. Bernadette, I, I'd also like to congratulate you and welcome you aboard. And in your interview, I said to you that you will be joining another young lady, Francesca, on the force. And I think the two of you being the sole female amongst a bunch of men, um, you, you can bring a lot to our community. Uh, and we very much appreciate having you and Francesca and all the officers that are here tonight. We thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. If there are no other comments, I'd just like to indicate that uh, you are a female among the males. But I do want you to know that we had a female retire. That's so right. we hired a young lady 25 years ago to be on our force. So uh, we were well in advance of everybody coming in. <laughs> and, and, and the fellas treat you great. Thank you. Chief, you have any comments? Thank you to the Mayor Council for uh, assisting the police department with the staffing levels and the uh, supervisory positions that you just recently filled. Thank you, we can't do this without your support. Thank you. You've been instrumental and helping build the department back to a respectable number. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, um, everyone is welcome to join uh, the police department downstairs for a small celebration. And I'd ask everyone to please rise for the dismissal of the colors.
Please be seated. <coughs> Mayor, I'd let the family know they can go downstairs. Yeah, it's just a minute to learn. Keith, let the family know they should go downstairs. <coughs> yeah, they're all going down. Hey, keep somebody here for us. <laughs> you can stay and listen, but downstairs better. Steve, you stay? <laughs> oh, okay. As long as the camera guy stays. <laughs> wow. Was it something we said? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I all time low. <laughs> yeah. That's Mayor, at this time, we'll move on to um, ordinances this evening on first reading. We have resolution R158-15, ordinance 15-13, introduced on first reading. Be resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance amending and supplementing the code of the borough of Elmwood Park entitled zoning and site plan review be passed and adopted on first reading and be resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the municipal building on Thursday June 4th 2015 at 8 p.m. or soon thereafter as same can be heard at which time and place all persons interested in said ordinance can be heard be a further resolved that the borough clerk be and he is hereby authorized to advertise an illegal newspaper a notice of introduction and final hearing as required by law. Motion, please. So moved. Mr. Coletti, second. Second. Second, second by Mr. Boncino. Discussion? Yeah, Mayor, if I may. Um, for quite some time, there's always been uh, talk about Market Street and that it was on a decline. <coughs> and approximately five years ago, uh, I wasn't a councilman at the time. It was for that span of time that I wasn't here. I decided to make a little study out of it. And what I did was I got in my vehicle, I started off on River Road, and I focused in on the, the stores, the commercial zone here, and went right down to Midland Avenue. And I said to myself, what's the difference here? Why is uh, the area closest to River Road, heading east, uh, it's not as productive as uh, the bottom area getting closer to Midland Avenue. And that's where you have the bank on one corner and the Walgreens on the other. Uh, and if, as you come back, you have that uh, mall where the Dunkin' Donuts is and the Mandy's Mall, if you will. Well, the difference was that uh, those businesses were thriving over there because they had parking. It was, it was that simple, whereas further west you come, closer to River Road, uh, there was just parking in the street. And that probably worked in the 40s and the 50s, mom and pa stores where they only need one or two parking spaces, and uh, that would suffice in, in terms of the, the, them uh, surviving economically. So with that, came to the council, and the council said, well, let's, let's take it to the planner town planner. Town planner came in, uh, he observed, and he came back to us and he had said that uh, the area is experiencing economical obsolescence, which basically is saying that for a property owner to rehabilitate his property and bring it into a more current state, uh, there would have to be uh, a reason uh, for that, a benefit. And with the way the parking situation is to where business cannot survive, there was no way he was going to recoup his expense. So that would just put any type of rehabilitation on hold. So what we did, the council focused in on it. It was a bipartisan movement here. And we agreed to take the planner's suggestion serious, uh, which was to extend the commercial zone 50 feet on Market Street and 50 feet on Route 4 and with some other incentives for a would-be developer to come in and, in the future and possibly uh, enhance the area. Uh, now, there were some other options that would be to buy a buy a building on Market Street, knock it down and, and, and make parking, but that would be on the taxpayer's back. Uh, what we're proposing here tonight by opening up the commercial zone 50 feet, we are 
proposing that the businesses pay for their parking <coughs> and not the residents. <coughs> uh, some interesting facts about what we're about to, to uh, do here is uh, in that 50 feet, no building can be put up. It's purely designated for parking and green area. And I, I know my colleagues here would all like to see that green area dense. We want it to be a, a blockage uh, so that uh, it, the, the resident in back of the commercial zone gets to see a wooded area and not a parking lot. The same zoning laws that are in effect now apply to what we're about to approve. Nothing changes in terms of bringing in any other type of business than what existing, is existing in law in the zoning laws. The rateables, by losing a couple of houses in the back uh, and what we gain in the front, should equal out, if not enhance itself. Adjacent values will increase. There's no doubt about it because now there's more usage and their property has now became more valuable. And then the bottom line there is that no resident, no resident has to sell. And with all that information, if this council did not do what they're doing here tonight, we would be remiss in our duties. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mayor, if I may. Um, I'd like to uh, let everybody know that uh, the, the town of the, the borough of Fairlawn, the community of Fairlawn, thought about this, about their river road section years ago, many years ago. And they changed the laws many years ago. And now you are seeing the fruit on what's happening to that, and it's revitalized the river road, river road section of Fairlawn. The houses behind were taken down to put up the parking lots. So what we're doing is essentially basically the same thing. We're trying to revitalize and bring back business to Elmwood Park. And as the councilman said, I believe that the rateables should equal out, if not better, uh, given the situation. And uh, it's, this is not something that's going to happen tomorrow, next year, or maybe not in the next 15 years. But something ha it has to start somewhere, and it should start right here, and I'm proud to support it. Anyone else? Uh, I have just a couple comments. Uh, number one, uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about the Market Street because we had a public hearing with everybody concerning uh, Market Street and Route 4 because this <coughs> ordinance does include Route 4 on the north side of it. And we had very few, if any, people uh, come and, and, and indicate that they were opposed to this. So we have to keep that in mind. But uh, I wish that the council would look at the uh, Route 4 area. It's only on the north side of Route 4 that they would, uh, uh, this ordinance would take effect. And uh, I don't know, uh, we have done two things on Route 4 already. One of the items that uh, I'd like to mention is that uh, uh, people came in and on Orange Avenue, uh, a doctor's office was coming in and they bought the house behind it. People notifi were notified. They knew a doctor's office was coming in. They knew the house was not in good repair and they all approved it in the zoning board. The same thing happened on markets on Route 4 uh, where the TD Bank is. Uh, it's not TD Bank, it's uh, um, Fargo. Wells Fargo Bank. And the house behind it was in bad shape. They bought the house, they tore it down, and everybody was pleased that the bank was coming in. And, and I think that's a good idea so that the people know what's coming in. As this ordinance indicates at this point, we really don't know what's coming in. With the ordinance is passed, they can go back another 50 feet, which will give them 100 feet, and we have no idea what may come in as long as they fit in that zone. And on Route 4, I'm concerned about that. I'm pleased that this council did remove from this ordinance all the, uh, the 50 feet uh, thought of uh, 13th Avenue, so that uh, anybody that has a business <coughs> on Route 4 uh, adjacent to 13th Avenue would not infringe on all the homes on 13th Avenue. So I, I applaud the, uh, the uh, council for going along with my recommendation to do that, and I think the people who came to that meeting are going to be relieved to find that, that that's the situation. Uh, other than that, uh, I, I'd like to see how this is all going to work out, and uh, thank you. Call a roll, please. On roll call, Council Members Catamania. Abstain. Coletti. 
Yes. Martino? Yes. Pedagano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, also this evening on first reading, we have Resolution R-159-15, Introduce Ordinance 15-14 on first reading. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled a bond ordinance to authorize the 2015 road resurfacing program in, by, and for the Borough of Elma Park in the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $510,000 to pay the cost thereof and to make a down payment to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such an appropriation and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds be passed and adopted on first reading and be it resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the municipal building on Thursday, May 21st, 2015 at 8 p.m. or soon thereafter as same can be heard at which time and place all persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk be and he is hereby authorized to advertise in a legal newspaper a notice of introduction and final hearing is required by law. Motion, please. Still moved. Mr. Dombrowski, second. Second. Mr. Pedigano, discussion. Call the roll, please. On roll call, council members Catamagna? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Martino? Yes. Pedigano? Yes. Poncino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Mayor of one ordinance this evening under second reading, Resolution R-160-15, introduce Ordinance 15-12 on second reading. Whereas public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend Article 3, Chapter 34-3 of the Code of the Borough of Elwood Park entitled Definitions and Word Usage. And whereas said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, April 16, 2015, and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting. And whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given the opportunity to be heard concerning same, now therefore be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elwood Park that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend Article 3, Chapter 34-3 of the Code of the Borough of Elwood Park entitled Definitions and Word Usage pass on final reading. Mayor will need a motion to open to the public. You have a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Voncino. Second. 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 Mr. Dombrowski. Discussion. This is the DEX? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me just ask the, this has to go before the planning board. Is that right, uh, Mr. Uh, right, Mendoza? Right, last night. We discussed last night. Uh, okay. Let, let me indicate this. The planning board last night <coughs> appeared to <coughs> approve it. They didn't seem to have any question about this. However, they didn't vote on it because the meeting is next week. Now, can we pass this ordinance tonight before they vote on it, or do we have to table it until the next meeting? They're going to approve it. There's no question about it. Yeah. They took no action on it? It was only a work meeting. The, the action will be taken next Wednesday at the public meeting. Through, through you, Mayor, t the advertisement was made at the previous meeting um, to have a public hearing tonight. Um, so based on the yeah, I have consideration no by the planning board but not formal action, my recommendation would be to table this or uh, ordinance and it will be heard at the next public meeting following correspondence from the I planning board. I think board. we should have the, the public state, uh, talk on it since they, it's, it was advertised that way, and then you can table it when we have to vote on it. We need meeting. to conduct a public hearing, but then we can consider a tabling motion. Yeah, that's fine. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on that particular ordinance? Planning board didn't approve it. They have to approve it first. Uh, Mayor and Council, Rich Kowalski, 42 one uh, this ordinance here, I think it's a good ordinance for the decks. Uh, long before this was changed, and Wolfgang Albright was the building inspector changed this with the planning board. Before that, it was this way. However, as far as the planning board goes, and Mr. Randazzle, the attorney, could correct me on this, the planning board has 45 days to make a decision on this. And it's only a courtesy decision. The council holds the final decision on this. Remember that. We know 40, that. 45 days. If they don't make a decision, it's approved by the planning board automatically. And Joe can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Just, just a short note. So, but unless maybe it got to the planning board a little late or from after the meeting, whatever. So you should wait the 45 days. Oh, it's not going to be 45 days because uh, next Wednesday they'll probably approve it. Well, and they then approve it in the meantime. It's fine. And, and then we it's will. It's an uh, academic proposal because the planning board doesn't have the final say whether they reject it or not. This council does. The council knows that. Planning board knows that it's just for their review. It's just for their review. Anyone else who wish to be heard? If not, I'll close the public portion of the meeting. Gentlemen, I think we need a tabling motion until the, after the planning. Is that correct, Mr. Randazzo? Yes. I don't think we should table this, Mayor. 
We could pass and then the approval will be done next week. But why wait? I don't understand. I don't see any through, reason. Through you, Mayor. Is there a law for that? Mr. Chawinski is correct. The planning board has 45 days to right. respond to us. Now, we were required to hold the public meeting tonight because that's how it was advertised in the newspaper. But we have the final say. We have the final say, but we do have an obligation to wait for their comments. It's not going to be a question, though. I'm just looking I at the... I don't think there would be no question. I mean, last night, nobody objected. It was uh, accepted. It was okay. It's, it's more process. No, we delay and delay for what? I have a question. We can't delay for minutes. If we were to pass this this evening, are we within the law? I guess no. that's what's on the table. I think, I think you would subject yourself to a challenge. From, from the planning board. From the planning board. From somebody who object? didn't agree with okay. an objective. Okay. It's only going to be two weeks. No, I said from. I, I we don't have to go through a first gonna, reading again, then, right? Uh, no. no. So we'll just hold the second. No, so. the second reading would be, so list, be assuming that the planning board now. responded oh. next Wednesday. Okay. This would be listed for a second reading on 521. Okay. May I have a tabling I motion, please? I spoke to Mr. Conte last night. I said that he doesn't see why it should not be accepted. And you will have a letter ready right after the meeting. Frank, but uh, I'm for this Mr. Ordinance, Mr. Canada Manager, with a little humor involved, uh, you appointed the attorney. Why don't we listen to him? <laughs> all he's saying. We, we don't correct. have to agree with the attorney all the time. Eh? <laughs> we can all say with the agreement. Scott, the better practice would be the way for a plan to take action. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, you, based on the attorney's recommendation, I move to table this. And just for the record, I am for this. So I just want to stay within the bounds of the laws. I'll second it, and I'll agree that I'm also for it. Call a roll, please. On roll call to table, Council Members Catamagna? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Martino? Yes. Pettigano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Don Brown? Yes. Motion carries. Mayor, this evening under the consent agenda, we have resolution 161-15, payment of bills. Resolution 162-15, payment of escrow. Resolution 163-15, confirmation of payroll. Resolution 164-15, redeem third-party tax lien for 85 Bank Street. Resolution 165-15, redeem third-party tax lien 85 Bank Street. Please note that those are two separate liens. Resolution 166-15, release cash performance bond and surety bond 301 Riverfront Boulevard. Resolution 167-15, authorized salary adjustment due to state certification for Barbara Despoto. Resolution 168-15, authorized refunds for OPA request in the municipal clerk's office. Resolution 169-15, authorized refund for spring soccer program in the recreation department. Resolution 170-15, resolution approving fire company defender number two for a door-to-door -door fundraiser. Resolution 171-15, authorized change of status from part-time to full-time crossing guard Eugene Patton. Resolution 172-15, authorized release of road opening performance bond 93 Rudolph Avenue. Resolution 173-15, authorized handicapped parking space for 116B Iosia Terrace. Resolution 174-15, authorized purchase of the 2015 <coughs> Ford Expedition for the Fire Department. Resolution 175-15, authorized purchase of a 2015 Police Interceptor SUV for the Police Department. Resolution 176-15, award bid for improvements to Iosia Terrace, Franklin Street, and Court Street. Resolution 177-15, resolution authorizing status change for hourly employee to part-time salaried employee, Judy Horak and the Fire Prevention Bureau. Resolution 178-15, resolution authorizing status change from hourly employee to part-time salaried employee, Laura Doherty, Building Department. Resolution 179-15, proclamation supporting the Click It or Ticket mobilization program. And resolution 180-15, refund taxpayer overpayment due to appeal 75 Main Street. Motion, please. So, so moved. <coughs> second. Boncino, Dombrowski, discussion? Call the roll, please. <coughs> Council members, Catamania? Yes. Coletti? Yes. Martino? Yes. Pettigano? Yes. Boncino? Yes. Dombrowski? Yes. Departmental reports, we have the Municipal Court Comparison Report, the Municipal Court Report for March 2015, the Financial Report for March 2015, and the Library Board Minutes for March 16th, 2015. Motion to receive and file? So, so moved. moved. Moved by Mr. Coletti, second by Mr. Mr. Uh, Martino. Boncino. Discussion? All in favor, opposed, so ordered. Mayor, we have two applications this evening for raffle, St. Leo's Church 50-50 raffle application and Columbus Elementary School PTO 50-50 raffle application. Motion to approve. So moved. Dombrowski, second? Second. Mr. Pedigano. Discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so ordered. Mayor, that concludes my portion of the agenda. <coughs> Council reports, Mr. Catamania. We'll start on well, the right. Well, we already mentioned uh, the deck ordinance, and I was very happy to see that everybody was in favor of us, right? And uh, I think this gives a better look to a, a nice, to a building, you know? Uh, it's good to have a deck, even on the second floor, where you can get some tan, lay, put nice chairs, and uh, enjoy the days. We have beautiful days outside. Thank you. That's the way I grew up. I like it. Also, the Board of Education meeting, I was unable to attend. As you know, we were a different place that night. So nothing to say. Thank you. Mr. Dombrowski? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'd like to again congratulate our newly appointed Elmo Park Police Officer Bernadette Yates. I think that she will bring, uh, she'll be phenomenal for our community. On the Board of Health, uh, there will be a free rabies clinic on May 20th from 5 to 7 p.m. Bring your cats, your licensed cats and licensed dogs to the fire company number four located on the boulevard from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, I would also like to thank the Bergen County Sheriff's Department, our Elmo Park Police Chief Mike Feligno, and our Elmo Park DPW Superintendent Scott Cars for helping me coordinate the use of the Bergen County inmates to help clean the perimeter of the county park uh, on the walking paths. They did a great job. They removed all the non-organic debris that was uh, around the walking path. I would also like to thank the Elmo Park Regional Chamber of Commerce for donating the lunches for the inmates for all three, day, uh, for all three days that they worked here in Elmo Park. It's just another way that we're working together to help keep Elmo Park clean. Um, ladies and gentlemen, a few weeks ago, through an email, I informed our council of some severe and potential dangerous conditions at the library. A few days later, I received an email from the library attorney telling me that I violated the Open Public Records Act. It is because of that and that email and their poor attempt to shut me up that I come to you now to bring it out into the open public. I will never accept a threat to remain silent when I feel the citizens of Elmo Park can get hurt and when they're not getting what, they're, what they expect from their tax dollars. This council, year after year, appropriates about $700,000 of municipal tax dollars to the library. This money is expected to cover operating costs and expenses for the year. This money is supposed to be used to maintain the property. In 2012, the library board took $900,000 of saved up monies and appropriated to capital reserve, which means the money cannot be taken away from by the borough unless it is given back by the library. Instead, the library board came up with an idea that they will add square footage to the library and fix all the problems with the building. Well, it is now May 7th, 2015, and that money and the library capital reserve account now stands and has grown to $1.4 million. Finally, last Thursday, last Thursday, in a rush vote, nonetheless, in a rush vote, they finally voted to hiring an architect. Approximately three and a half years later, exactly 41 months have gone by since they put the money into capital plans and they finally just hired a contractor, excuse me, an architect, not even a contractor. Bringing me, bringing me back to, the, to my concerns for the safety of the residents about the library. With $1.4 million sitting in the bank, I question why there is a four-foot hole still in the soffit of the, of the library. We already had squirrels climb in there. We have birds flying in there. We've had squirrels fall through the ceiling. The hole in the roof, from what I understand, has been there since October of 2014. Go past the library, the hole is still there. Why, with a million four in the bank, is there not a doorway into the building that is safe? Here's the handicap ramp that has angled railings that are about ready to fall down. If I was somebody who had a cane and had to try to walk into that building, I wouldn't hold on to that railing. Why is the curbing not fixed? Okay, I'll, I'll give you that the, that the DPW might have done it during plowing, 
But ladies and gentlemen, this is just one. Here's two. Here's three. Three potential problems for somebody to fall. We've already had a worker fall. If you take a look at the front of the building, all you see is cones laying all over the place. It's a disgrace. All of these concerns were brought to the attention of my council members because I wanted them to know what's going on. I didn't ask for a vote. I didn't ask for their opinion. I just was informing them. So I did not break any open Public Records Act laws. Now, through these concerns, the Board of Health came in and did a report, which is also here and it's also available to the public if you like to open it. According to the complaint, there was mold and mice infestation in the building. According to the inspector, no mold was found in the common areas. However, in the basement, which houses the utilities, there was a small amount of mold, and that is only, avail only open to the maintenance worker. Uh, so there technically is mold in the building. Anybody who has a mold allergy, you know that if it's anywhere in the building, it can hurt you. They also said that the soffits in the fascia area are in poor repair, with the facility leaking and squirrel infestation. Evidence of squirrel infestation is apparent in many, and I, again, I'm just quoting from this paper, in many of the second floor community rooms. Apparently, surrounding trees and shrubs were removed by the DPW in effort to rid the library of squirrels. However, this measure proved to be quite fruitless. Again, exact words. The recommendations were to have the Elmo Park Building Department go in, do an inspection of the roof, the soffits, the fascia, and determine what repairs would, be, would abate the leaks and the squirrels. Also a survey of the exter exterior property for safety. They also said that a licensed pest control company should be hired to control and eliminate the presence of squirrels. It amazes me, as I'm accused of wrongdoing, by bringing these major issues to the attention of my colleagues. The wrongdoing here is the library board. They didn't use their yearly appropriated funds to fix things. When they broke, if you have a leak in your roof, do you wait four years to fix it? Instead, they allowed them to deteriorate and to worsen, and they chose to bank the money promised to the resident and promised the residents in addition. Now the library board attorney tells us, tells me, that the building is owned and maintained by the borough, and that it's the borough's responsibility to repair it. So ladies and gentlemen, according to their attorney, we, the council, will need to raise your tax dollars to repair the library while they're the ones who let it deteriorate and neglect in the first place and have $1.4 million of your tax dollars in the bank. I promise you, as long as I'm your councilman, I will not allow this extortion to happen under my watch. I want you all to hear about it. You heard it from me. It's now out in the open. I violated no Open Public Record Act. And I'm not going to be quiet on this. I'd also like to, at this, lastly, I'd like to wish all the moms a very happy Mother's Day on Sunday and progress. Thank you. Mr. Uh Valencino? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. I was told I have to hold on to furniture because I keep touching the microphone. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it like this or not. I feel like I'm about to be frisked. Right, I'm going to hold, hold on to the chair. Uh, <coughs> first, I'd like to welcome Bernadette Yates to uh, the police department. That brings our table of organization to 40, rounds out the uh, organization as the chief has outlined it to us. I wish her nothing but a successful career here in Elmwood Park as a police officer. Um, resolution 179.15, uh, part of the consent agenda tonight, was a click it or ticket. Uh, and that program is going to run May 18th through May 31st of this year. Uh, there were 556 motor vehicle fatalities in New Jersey in 2014. And a large percentage of those fatalities were due to uh, occupants in a car not wearing a seatbelt. Um, it's estimated that uh, with seatbelts, the use of seatbelts, over 135,000 lives have been saved between 1975 and 2000. 
So uh, this year to enhance visibility, uh, public education, and to uh, lead to an enforcement, they're going to have this click it or ticket program over the course of May 18th to the 31st. And the goal, in addition to uh, the awareness, is they'd like to get the usage up to 90 percent. It's currently around 87, 88 percent. So wear your seatbelts May 18th to May 31st, but definitely wear them beyond May 31st. It's the right thing to do. There was an editorial in the record today, and I believe it was called A, a, a Victory for Pedestrians. Um, I think it should have been A Victory for Common Sense, because we finally have a traffic signal on Broadway at the train station. I spent years, as my kids were commuting uh, into Manhattan and down into Jersey City, watching our residents and commuters try and navigate that highway during rush hour in the morning and rush hour in the evening and this dinky yellow blinking light there that didn't stop a car uh, and there were a, a lot of near misses that I saw firsthand. Uh, I went down, the, the, the install was completed at the end of uh, April and uh, I, I watched it in operation and it was exactly what was needed down there. There's a, a crosswalk, a guide to where you get to the crosswalk and the signals that can be controlled by the uh, pedestrians so I'm looking forward to that being used successfully for years to come. And finally, I said it last, last meeting, but I'll say it again, the Elmwood Park Volunteer Ambulance Corps is having their car show Sunday, September 20th, uh, 10 to 3 p.m. at the high school, and the rain date is uh, October 11th. You know, it's early, there'll be paperwork and flyers <coughs> distributed throughout the summer, but come out and support the Ambulance Corps. They do a lot of good work for our community. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Martino? Yes, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd also like to congratulate our new officer, Bernadette Yates, uh, many years of uh, safe travels in our town. Uh, two things. Uh, the Homeowner Association, uh, on the 20th of this month, will the first 25 people that come to the meeting will be getting a scratch off. So if you come to the meeting, you can become a millionaire. So please, join us. We're really, really trying to make this organization grow and hopefully the first 25 people will get a scratch off and maybe they will enjoy some good luck. And uh, I'm sure by the time everyone sees this uh, on Tuesday, Mother's Day will be passed, but I wish everybody's happy Mother's Day. And uh, all the mothers to be and all the mothers that have passed, hopefully you're looking down on us and taking care of us. Thank you. Mr. Pettigown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the rec department uh, is going along strong this year. We are up to 185 players in for the soccer club. The uh, programs are doing very well. Indoor soccer awards dinner will be May 14th. And basketball playoffs are over. And their um, coaches game will be on April 17th and dinner on the May 21st. Um, Community Day will be June 6th. I believe it starts at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. 11, 11, 11, 11 o'clock. Uh, please come. It'll be rides and uh, refreshments for everybody. Um, also, the um, on another note, the uh, Elmwood Park uh, Alumni Association, uh, with the help of the generosity of um, John Durante, Durante Construction. Uh, we decorated the island at the top of Lincoln Ave, and we're hoping that uh, with the cleanup of the park and a few of the other programs that are going to be going up around in town that we can clean up, spruce up, and look really good for our centennial next year. So I just again want to thank John Durante for his help and um, anybody that goes by, bring a bucket of water, please pour it on the plants. Um, that's it, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Coletti. Uh, regarding uh, resolution R-176-15, purchasing a fire department vehicle, uh, that was in our consent agenda. Uh, I just want to bring it to the attention that, that the funds come from the Bureau of Fire Prevention, headed by Poppy the ARCO, 
who has passed on those dollars for this purchase, and he guarded the, those funds by, uh, they were acquired from uh, fees and fines from his department, uh, rendering no cost to the taxpayer. I want to say nice job to Pompey and stay the course. And uh, bouncing off of uh, something Councilman uh, Fancino said regarding fundraisers for the fire department and the ambulance corps, uh, whether it be a corn toss, a mailing request, or door to door, be as generous as possible. Let's keep in mind uh, these are volunteer organizations whose safety is our top priority, and safety does not come cheap. And last but not least, anyone interested in joining the fire department, you can call our clerk's office and they will guide you to the proper people, or you can call me at 201-797-4221. Mayor? Thank you. Mr. Randazzo? Progress, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pettigano, I don't mean to take any of your uh, situation with the with recreation department, but I only recently found out that on Monday, Donna Pugliese, the director of our recreation building and department, uh, is going to be meeting with the superintendent of schools about some of the programs that they have and also talk about the tennis courts. Yes. So, so I just wanted to add that. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to read something that uh, I think is very interesting. Persistence in government is successful if it's taken care of. I have learned over the years that frequently, not always, persistence in getting things completed with other governments related to our local government can lead to success. And let me give you two examples, both recently completed. First, Elmwood Park has a very, had a very bumpy, a somewhat dangerous street pavement located between Locust Street and Marcus Street on River Drive. Since River Drive is a Bergen County road, I called the county to notify them of the condition of the road and asked if they could repave the, uh, the area. I was informed that this section of River Drive, located under Route 80, belonged to New Jersey Department of Transportation, <coughs> not the county. And there was some disagreement as to whose responsibility it was to pave that road, Bergen County or the Department of Transportation. This was news to me since as a freeholder for many years, River Drive has been completely paved at least twice and there was never a problem, but that was then. Fortunately, early this year, other mayors and I had a meeting with Senator Nellie Pozo at Nellie and Poe's office and with Senator Poe and with the Department of Transportation Commissioner Jamie Fox to express any concerns we have related to the, th that department and our community. I gave Commissioner Fox my list, and this is one of the most small but pesty concerns that I had. <coughs> Commissioner Fox immediately told me that, Mayor, this will be done in the spring. Ladies and gentlemen, it was done last week. End of story. Great job. Second, Elmwood Park and Fairland have been working together for years to remove the pedestrian danger located on Route 4 crossing near the railroad station for many years, and as Mr. Ven uh, Boncino has indicated. We had meetings with DOT officials, Nellie Poe, Assemblyman Sumter, to see how could this could be accomplished. Then newly elected councilman, Lou Boncino, whose two sons, as he's indicated, went to high school and had to use that railroad, got involved. After some attempts to improve the crossing, Commissioner Fox convened another meeting with Senator Gordon, Mayor Cardsgrove, myself, and other officials to see how it could be resolved. Since most commuters, who cross Route 4 for a variety, from, come from a variety of towns and use this parking lot, our parking lot. Commissioner Fox was again very concerned. He spoke to his staff and it was suggested that a regular traffic light, and not some of the other attempts that were made, be installed and be synchronized with all the other traffic lights on Route 4. That has, and that would be done soon by the end of April, he suggested. It was completed on April 30, 2015. It was completed by that date that he wanted to do this, but it took nine years to do. I would like to thank Commissioner Fox, all our state officials, along with Keith Kazmark, our administrative clerk, for their assistance in getting this project done, both projects. And I would also like to congratulate and thank Congressman Bill Pascrow for his significant role to improve the railroad crossing on Midland Avenue, which is presently in progress. After years of being a major problem, 
This area is presently being worked on, and I hope that it will provide safety for everyone. I hope the sign they put up, signage that they put up, not just one sign, stops people from getting stuck between the railroad gates and having, a, uh, having them hit by some of the trains coming by. I'm still working on other infrastructure and traffic problems, but that will take funds, county, state, and federal cooperation, and of course, time. One of, the ones, one of the items that I do want to mention is I'm still working on the sound barriers. It hasn't forgotten it. It's only been 16 years. And uh, when I mentioned it to uh, Commissioner Jamie Foxx, <laughs> he, he didn't seem too thrilled with it. However, he seemed very pleased to know that we might be looking for some parking for uh, commuter transportation down near the D, uh, DPW building that the state, and we all know we've been trying to do that. So we have that to work on. I went to a community development meeting and we were awarded $200,274 to fix our roads. Uh, that's a large, if not the largest sum of money we ever received. However, I was recently informed uh, that there's a problem with uh, uh, another community in New York City, in New York State, and they're suing New Jersey and all these uh, community development organizations, and we may have to give some money back. How much Elmwood Park have to give back, that would include Garfield, Lodi, uh, Hackensack, and some other areas. We may have to donate some back again. But I hope we get enough money to complete the projects that we have in mind, and it's all road repair. Uh, one other thing that uh, I, I was down at the train station today, not the train station, the railroad crossing on Midland Avenue. It's amazing what they're doing down there. It should be a very smooth crossing <coughs> when they finish the job, and uh, hopefully uh, all the signage will be up and people will keep themselves safe and, and, and not sit on the phone and, and forget about the railroad uh, uh, grades crossing down. And lastly, uh, there have been some complaints last year and this year about noise coming in from Eastside Park in Patterson. It comes across the river, gets quite loud at night, and I'm working with uh, all the police chiefs before, but uh, Chief Feligno has been working with me, and the council sh should know this. We're trying to get that noise uh, eliminated. Uh, Patterson's got problems uh, beyond just noise, but it's getting to be a real hassle for us here, and we're working very diligently with that. And uh, anybody in town who is watching this or or hears about it, they can call my office and uh, we'll explain exactly what we're trying to do. And we're getting cooperation from the DPW and, uh, excuse me, DPW Patterson Police Force. And uh, if anybody has a problem with this, just to call our police department and we will immediately call the Patterson uh, Police Department. Okay. We have what, five minutes? No, now. Now. Okay. Now. We'll just take a short break then. Is there anyone in the public who wants to be heard? Okay. Name and address, please. James D'Amico, 64 Willow Street. Uh, first, I wanted to say, um, to reiterate, Councilman Martino, please, if you could come to the homeowners. We meet down there. It's not a political meeting. We have cake and coffee, and people from town just come on down, and everybody talks, and it's really wonderful. We're trying to build it up, so please, you know, make it if you can to the homeowners. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I just wanted to talk to the council just for a moment um, about what's going on at the Board of Ed again. We had to do every month because there wasn't a lot said. Um, but then they should they should get uh, a videographer, a tape, and then you wouldn't have to come well, in. <laughs> they're going to put one in soon. But Councilman Dombrowski brought something up that really gets me. Uh, this whoever started Capital Reserve. And I just heard it tonight when he spoke about the library board. Um, um, well, that's what's happening at the board of ed, but um, they, they're getting money and they're putting it into accounts where once it's there, it's done. The taxpayers can't, they can't use it. For the school, they can't use it. Anyway, we'll go on. In the community news today, the shopper, as I call it, as everybody's read, the board of ed passed their budget. And that's a great thing. We have a 2% increase. Again, which everybody knows. It brings us to, they say 1.3. We have almost a 1.4, just 
just about $1.4 million surplus again this year. So with last year's surplus on the Board of Ed was $2.2 million. So we're at $3.6, $3.7 million in two years that at this point, the Board of Ed can't do anything with. They have to put this money now, this year, into a capital reserve for improvements on buildings, or they can give it back to the state because we owe the state money. Just as Councilman Dombrowski brought up with the library money, either they have to use it or then you can give it back to the taxpayers. Well, that money comes up to over $5 million of taxpayers' money now in, in reserve accounts. That's almost $1,000 a house in this community. Anyway, so I just, they raised us 2% when we have an increase when we have a surplus. They raised us anyway. And I asked at the meeting, why did you raise us 2% if we have such a huge surplus? And the answer was, because we can. We can raise you 2%, it's found money. We're allowed to raise you 2%. Now that's taxpayer money, it's not found money. Why would we not take the 2% if we could do it? Well, why would you when you're sitting on almost $4 million of our money? Council didn't take the 2% this year, you could have, but you chose not to. You didn't need it, so you didn't take our money. Well, they took the money because now when we turn, everybody sees that they're going to start the new football field. It's very interesting. There's there's money increased this year of about $57 in your taxes. That's for a referendum that was passed by the voters to do capital improvements in the schools. However, the voters voted down a new football field, not once, but twice. Two different times, the people of Elmwood Park were asked, can we raise your taxes so we can build a football field. At two different times, they were told no. Last year, they raised our taxes anyway. And this year, they raised our taxes anyway. They didn't use the money, they put it into a fund, and now they're gonna build a football field with your money. That's much easier to say. Twice they were told not to, that they can't. They took the money anyway, and they're building a football field, and your taxes are going up again this year. Of course, no comment. Nobody will comment. I asked them, they won't even comment at the board. I know the mayor and council can't. You have no control over what they do. But um, I'm asking as a community, maybe people come out, come to the board of ed meetings, see what we can do. I almost backed down on this. I put 7,000 flyers out a month, two months ago and asked people, come to the meeting and see what they're doing. Let's see if we can fix this. But nobody came. So I pretty much, I almost gave up until somebody came to my office on Market Street last week and said they were sent by a couple of people from the Board of Ed asking me to back down and to stop with all the questions. So you know, I'll never back down now. So I'll need as much support as I can get from all the people. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Anyone else who wish to be heard? Robert Colon, 51 Parkview Avenue, Public Park. I just want to thank Mr. Dombrowski for your honesty and for the detail that you put out there. I went to the library board meeting the other day and I also saw, and I brought up a number of issues that I thought needed to be addressed. Most of them he brought up today and showed the pictures. I'm not opposed to a library, but I don't see expanding the library. I don't see it as being so crowded that it needs to be bigger. We can fix the library, we can improve the library, we can clean the library. 
but I don't see a reason to expand the library. If we did that, we'd take it. We'd say there's $1.4 million. If it was $400,000 to fix it, we could take a million dollars and put it back to the taxpayers, to, to the taxpayers. And he's right, too. How come, you know, $2 million in debt, then you find the $2 million, then you got a surplus of $2 million. Where's all, where, who's watching the money? And I understand uh, you have the Board of Ed, you have the library, everybody's in charge of their own money. But why can't the council have some kind of supervision over this? Over the library? The library. Board of Ed. State statute gives the library that ability. It is our money. Sure it is. And they saved it over the years. They've saved it over the years, but at what expense? They've saved it over the years so that it looks like it does today. They saved it over the years, if I can. They saved it over the years so that they can put another children's room on the outside. So far, the repairs have been made on the front, the steps, the, the cobblestones, that's been repaired. It's been screened up so that no birds or squirrels can get in, and we're moving on for that. So, you know, I'm not going to comment on some of uh, uh, Mr. Dombrowski's statements. I think what we have to do is work together with the library board. These are good people who are on the library board. They're not out there to spend a lot of money. They're trying to help the children. If we can build athletic fields, if we can do, uh, bring items to the parks, we can also increase the ability to have uh, a library improved and add more computers and so forth in the library. It's our building. Everybody in this room can pick up their phone today and get the information they need. I'm not saying we get that the library should go away. The library needs to be fixed, remodeled, cleaned, but not expanded. What do you want? To, how would you? How would you want to re? You're talking about even with the football field. Again, there's money that was put into funds, raised, raising our taxes, our tax money going over here. You're saying that they they saved it. If you go there, you can obviously see how they saved it because the whole place is in disrepair. No, no, that, that, you can't say that it's been saving it over <clears> the <throat> years to make this one room for children. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dombrowski, for bringing that. Anyone else who wish to be here? Steve Conti, 274 Market Street. I have a couple of things. I noticed driving over here, passing the apartments on the boulevard, they have signs out for garages for rent. So you're never going to get cars off the street if he's renting to people that don't rent apartments. Okay, so you never get these cars off the street. I'm sure other people are renting these apartments for storage. Probably no, nobody that's living there. No storage. You don't know what they're doing. As far as I know, they're not renting for storage. Well, still, so, it could be a homeowner renting and putting in a classic car. I don't know that's But it may not be a, an apartment a renter. I think Mr. Kazmark, you had a meeting with him today, right? Yes. Did they, was that brought up at all? Uh, no. Today's meeting was exclusively about okay. rent. Okay. Rent passable. Um, uh, Councilman Clay, you brought up something before about uh, safety doesn't come cheap. And I agree with you. That's why I still feel that this council should pass a resolution that our police department should not drop below 40. Okay? And I brought this up the last time I was here. The property on Market Street, which the Pirelli family owns, but there's an auto body shop there, which is actually an illegal body shop because he's using the former body shop renter's license. And he has Parkway Auto Body 2. I don't know what's going on there, but I've heard from a number of situations that have been occurring at that particular location, and I'm just wondering if the police department is doing anything to investigate it. I, I, does anybody know? Hmm. We can have the give you a couple of contacts. There's a lot of things. We can have the building department check it out. Um, 
You mean they are an illegal firm in there? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Kazmark, will you know that? Mm -hmm. I know that from the former owner of the auto body shop. Um, you were bringing up about the handicap uh, access to the library and the, the problems there. You know, if somebody's handicapped and there's a problem getting into the library, uh, they file a complaint with the ADA, you're going to lose a case. So but that's, I don't know why it was in such disrepair. That's why we're fixing that whole front. Yeah, but it shouldn't. You see, you, you said about uh, government and about the uh, crossing at Route 4. And it's taken eight, nine years for this to get accomplished. And I would say that was eight years too long. Government shouldn't work that slow. And that is the crux of the problem. Things, when you see improvements that need to be done, it shouldn't take this kind of time. And that brings me to another point. I was on the library board with Tony Ambrosia and a few other people. When I moved out of town, I was told I couldn't be on the board because I don't live in town anymore. Between the health department and the library board, how many members live in town? Is everybody on those two boards live in town? The health department, yes. The library, board. library board, only Jamie uh, Silverman lives in Wayne. Ah, okay. Which is interesting because I was told I could no longer be on the board. I don't know who told you. Well, I was voted right here off because of that reason. Well, it's legal. It's legal. Okay. Now, when we were on the library board together. I, I thought you, because you moved out, you wanted to, you thought you had to get off. I was told I had to get off. Oh, who told you? I was told by a couple of people that okay. I had to get off. I don't live in town anymore. Okay. Okay. Um, but getting back to the library board, when I was on the board with Tony Ambrosia, <clears throat> and there were things that had to be repaired and things that had to get done, they got done. That's exactly right. Okay, so what's the problem here? We didn't know the soffit was going to fall, and they've been working on it. That just fell down. They didn't know there was a problem. I understand that, Mayor, but listen. We keep on doing here duct tape to fix problems, okay? You don't fix problems with duct tape. Okay, when there's an issue, when you got a pothole in a parking lot, it should get repaired. Call the DPW, let them come and fill it. I'm still waiting for that to happen on Terror Street, but that's another story. If the building inside isn't being cleaned, that's on the custodian's problem. If there's uh, issues of squirrels, you call up and you call an exterminator. We did. Yeah, but not weeks later or whatever. Not weeks later. That is part of the problem here, okay? You need to fine-tune things to get things accomplished. We don't do that. We just let things to be stagnant until something happens which you have no choice. Now you have to do it. And that's not the issue. That should not come to that point, okay? I was dealing with that at my place of business. For the longest time, because got you know, duct tape fixes everything, and then you run into a major issue and you have no choice, and now you have to do a major repair. Things shouldn't get to that point, and I know that from experience now. Okay, but the previous things I had going on there, I had no control over, and it's the same thing here. Okay, do you need an expansion of the library? Absolutely not. You want to improve the library? Close the center. Opening. Repair the skylights. Okay? The building itself, you can turn the heat on all you want, you can turn the air on all you want, but it's all going out the window. Curious, what was the heating bill there last, this past winter? I did an analysis 2014 and 2013. Between the two years, we spent over $100,000 in utilities for gas and electric. That's, that's amazing. Now, I'm going to bring something else up, which probably nobody <coughs> thinks I'll bring up, but I will anyway. There was an article I found on, I guess, NewJersey.com, 
Brandon's of Tams in the state of New Jersey. Patterson is ranked 411th. Passaic, 415. We are ranked 424. And I don't know how they came up with this in reference to tax base and uh, I guess programs for the kids and recreational things and stuff like that. We are below Patterson and Passaic? What's wrong here? What are we doing? Who, who put that story? Uh, I'll show you the article. I'll, no, I'll not the article, the articles. company. You have any information on the company? It's NewJersey.com. No, the company who came up with that. I do not know. Because I Woodland know. Park is only 10 below us. But still. You know, I, don't, I, I question where they get that. If we're worse than Patterson, then everybody should move out of town. Give me a break. Well, I'm just, I will we're worse than Passaic. You don't know. What do they include in there that I, calls? Mayor. I will show you the article. You I have the article. I have the article. Well, what, what Be, because, because who put it out? A company in California? And what did they determine it on? Did they determine on the police department? Did they determine on health benefits? Did they determine on how the buildings are in town? How the roads are in town? Compare us with Patterson and say we're below Patterson? I don't think you even believe that. I'm just telling you what I know. I'm just telling you that and, it's fallacious. And, and, and I've been to Woodland Park, County. and you can't say neither. Woodland Park, West Patterson, or Elmwood Park, East Patterson is below Patterson. Well, but, uh, Just if, try driving if, through. If you take into effect just Bergen <laughs> County, we are way below in Bergen County as well. Well, that includes the school board and everything else. But they have a criteria. Well, I, I, I question their criteria. Okay. How can, uh, how can you say, how could you say, Elmwood Park is below Patterson for sake. Uh, I'm showing you the standings. That's what I'm showing you. Wow. Now, the last thing is the pump station. Are we, have we looked, are we uh, renovating the pump station or are we rebuilding a new pump station? We're rebuilding it from the inside. The, okay. We're renovating, the outside will stay as is. Maybe some minor changes to the outside but the building will stay and all the interior will be replaced. Did we even look at a proposal for a brand new pump station from, some, from scratch? That building there is a bunker. That's something that well, I understand that, would I'm cost a lot of money to replace what's there. And if well, you can, I, I, if you could, let me, let me finish. Yeah. Tip. If you could retrofit uh, the new pump into that bunker in essence, that's a lot of savings. Again, like I said, duct tape. Uh, did you ever consider just getting a proposal for a new pump station rather than renovating what you have there? Because you may be renovating this pump station there, and you may run into problems which would cost you more in the long run than building a brand new pump station. I'm sure that was The majority has to look yeah. at that I, and answer that question. Mr. Conti, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I understand where you're trying to go with this, but... I, you know, the only thing that I will say is that we, as a council, have to listen to our professionals. Our engineer has taken a look at it. Not only did Boswell look at it, who was here before, who is now uh, before Limo, they both concur that the project that we have going forward now is sufficient and shouldn't, you know, uh, uh, shouldn't need any. It, this will take what they call the hundred-year storm, and everything should be fine. So. Um, they, you know, it, it's in my opinion, and I think it's in the council's opinion that the, we have to accept the the, the professionals' uh, uh, recommendation. What's the cost of the pump station renovation? Do we know? Approximately. Uh, was it two? Two. Two point two. Two, two, point, one, two, two, point point two, two point two million. And is there any compensation for overrun? I'm sorry. Any compensation for you know, going over? There, there, there is, there is a um, uh, percentage and a contingency fee. <laughs> I think it's a little higher. Um, again, you know, we need to maintain our properties. That's just not Agreed. the borough. Agree. That's property owners. And unfortunately, uh, I think people try to save money and not maintain their properties uh, to the point where they become in disrepair. It's nice to see Lills, the former Lills, being work done. Guys spending a lot of money there. That's what property owners need to be doing in this town. But they don't want to invest in their properties. There's something wrong with that. You need to invest in your properties. 
need to keep your property values up. That helps this town. I'm not going to get into on my soapbox about parking again. You know how I feel about parking. Everybody shouldn't by now. How do you feel? And you all know how I feel about the missed opportunities we've had. How do you feel about parking? I've been bringing this up for 15, 20 years, Mayor. I bring up the apartments. I bring up Market Street. I bring up the Boulevard. How about Market Street? How about Market Street? What's your opinion? Let me ask you a question. I'm asking you a question. What do you think? What do I think about Market Street? What do you think we should do? I brought up about trying to get some annual parking, trying to get some additional parking. You know, years ago when we uh, we have we have authorized or sent a letter to the county asking them to come in and review angle parking. I, I appreciate that. We also have, right now, and I don't know if you agree, there's a two-hour parking on Market Street. That's really not enforced. Should we enforce it? Charlie Forty used to ride around with a three-wheeler and marked tires so when you, I was a kid. So you're in favor of enforcing two-hour parking on Market Street? I'm not in favor of enforcing two-hour parking, but when you got cars parked... But that's what we have. Market we Street actually have Street signs that say two-hour parking. Let me just finish that. When you have cars parked on Market Street from 8 a.m. Right. to 5 o'clock, right. that's a space that's being taken away, and it could be a business owner, it could be a somebody that lives in one of the houses that wants their driveway clear for whatever particular reason. Um, the types of businesses that you have on Market Street, two-hour parking is usually sufficient. Then this council should take that position, or not take that position, and tell them to park the tires the way Charlie Fournier used to do. Well, that's up to the council to do I, that. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Well, but I, again, we bring up about parking, and we bring up, and I brought this up last time, about resident parking. That was talked about here a few years right. ago, too, as well. They can bring that up, too. And that's another way you'll be able to get illegal students in town, in the high school, in the grammar school. In other towns, it works. It works in Garfield. It works in a number of towns. Now, listen. I appreciate you listening to me. I know I don't live in town anymore. And I decide to start coming out to meetings again. I did that for a few reasons. I still have a vested interest in this town. And I do a lot. My family's done a lot in this town over the years. And I still want to see this town improve. But in the 20 years I've been coming to council meetings, I haven't seen much. And I just hope we act upon things. We pull the trigger. We make decisions. And then we just don't sit on our hands. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to be heard? Uh, Richard Wesley, 42 Walnut Street. Before I touch on the library, I just want to mention about the apartment parking. I'm, I'm taken back by that sign, Steve, that uh, park, uh, garage is for rent <coughs> because as some of you councilmen do know, those garages were rented out to contractors and the like. This, this would behoove this council to pass an ordinance that those, those garages should be available only to parking for those apartments. And that's a simple ordinance, guys. Very simple. Not for contractors, and Bob, you can clarify that too, because you, you know as well as I do, contractors have garages in there, three or four of them. So which puts those residents of the apartments on the streets. Simple ordinance. As far as the, uh, the pump station goes, I, I have to take exception to uh, remodeling versus no. You know, I'm a builder, developer, engineer all my life, 40 years. Usually it's more costly to remodel. But in this instance, it's not only just saving the building. When you put that pump station online, before you can even put the, the old one online, you're going to have to shut it down. You're going to have to pay for the bypass of that pump station, which is very costly. That's a fourth thing, guys. That's going to cost you X amount of dollars a day just to bypass that station while you remodel it. Every month it's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. So I don't know if the engineer really looked at new, pushing it back, build a new one in place it while the other one is running parallel, and you can hook it into it all of a sudden just turn it over. It, it might be something to look at. Now, which brings me to the library. <clears throat> just to educate the, the people again, listen. 
The library is a great asset for the town. I'm always in favor of keeping the library. Absolutely. Many of my colleagues on the council before agree with me. But to spend a million for it, remodeling on an addition, it's a little bit ludicrous <coughs> because you have the room there inside internally in the building, which you can patch it up. You can save yourself the hundreds of thousands of dollars you are spending on heat and electricity by removing those skylights and putting an energy efficient roof system in and an energy efficient air conditioning and heating. You could remodel that building from the parking lot to the roof. And I know a couple of colleagues on the council, we went through the numbers. It wouldn't have cost you more than 400000 by the time you were done, thereby giving the taxpayers back so many tax points. And remember, the state library is explicit on that. That money can only go back for tax relief and nothing else. It can't go into your budget or anything else. Now, people will say, well, it's their money. It's your money, guys. In the good times, a third of assessed mill went to the library, from the library, from your tax dollars, into, your, into the library's corporate. And that's equated between seven hundred fifty and eight hundred fifty thousand dollars in the good times. Your budget was six and a quarter at the library. You do the math. What's left over? Now, if the money's there, your due diligence is to save what you can save, not to spend it. Does the unwritten law at the library, at the state library, at the time save twenty percent for your future budgets and put the rest back to the tax base, or have a capital plan? Remember, when I got to the council, the whole thing that this started with was they asked to pay, the library asked them, bear in mind the trustee right now for a library as of, I think, February. They asked us to pay the lot, put it on the road for it, for 65000 And I said, well, you have a million two or a million one in your budget, you people should pay your lot. Now, bear in mind, it is the town's building. How much did you say? Uh, there was a million one at that time. No, how much to pave the lot? It was 65000 when the library came to redo their parking lot. I have that in my notes. It's not 65, it was nine. Yeah. No, you, you, you patched it for yeah. 9000 with the taxpayer's money, not the library's money. Yeah. Now, that's when I, I hit the ceiling and said, guys, you got a million for you, pay the lot. And then we started digging into it, and we, then there was no capital. Well, I was told there was a capital plan for improvements. We called the state library. There was no capital plan. There was none existed. They were given three months to make a capital plan. And today we're at this crossroads where we hired an architect for $63,000 on an emergency meeting to go forward with the addition. Now, we don't have the plans. We haven't even finalized. And I still question the bid process of the architect. I wrote that to the chairman. But I have a bigger problem with that this should be put on hold is because it's your building, town. It's your building. Before we do a major renovation or addition, shouldn't the council be aware or have the okay to improve this building or the addition before it's even considered? And that's why I leave it tonight, Joe. Anyone else who wish to be here? Karen Barecki, 156 Lee Street. I live on Lee Street. I pass the library every day, probably 10 times a day. <clears throat> I don't know how many people have been in that library. You're talking about Mayor putting an addition on for children. The children's room that they have is a disgrace. Filthy, dirty disgrace. They spent $100,000 on electric. How much money did they spend on maintenance, on cleaning? You walk into the door, there's a baseboard heat with wires sticking out. It's filthy, crust infested. I wouldn't go to, I wouldn't take my kid to the library for anything. The filth in that library is a disgrace. And God forbid you'd want to drink a water, because the fountain doesn't work. But it's so filthy dirty that you would never put your head in a water fountain like that. What kind of maintenance do we have? That's our building. I understand there's a library board. But who maintains that building? Library. But don't they see? Well, you should come to more meetings. I will come to more meetings. Mayor, I have no, not my own children. I've never had my own children. I'm a step-parent. I never put my two cents in because I didn't think I had the right. But I can't keep my eyes closed anymore. It's disgraceful. You're talking about adding an addition? You, I sat at that meeting and looked at the table. The formica is peeled off all those tables. Tapes. Maybe they should That's buy. children? Maybe they should buy more tables. Table like that? Yeah. The toilet and the sink in that bathroom. It's disgraceful. 
the dust, it's, it's, it's absolutely a sin. And all of you that do have children, go into that library and you tell me you'll bring your kid to sit at that table, because I wouldn't. And this town needs a library. I agree, yes, today the kids, everybody's so smart with these gadgets in their hands. But a library is something that children have to learn how to research, and that's, that's what it's about. But we don't need a bigger library, because I see that parking lot empty all the time. There's cars, but it's not packed to the max. Go into Fairmont's library. You won't see what you see in our library. It's a shame, and I will come to more meetings. But another thing about that meeting, it takes three people to pass a $63,000 cost, three people. It was three people. They passed, was only they one. voted, and they was, passed that. It was approved by all present, which was more than three and one abstention. And also, you know, just hearing that, maybe council should also know, the people that didn't attend that meeting, that they were given the information about voting the evening before, a 23-page document that they had to read and go in the next day and vote on. And, and, and you have to make a vote. It was asked to be tabled, they wouldn't table it. So all I'm saying is our council should check out that library. If we own that library, we should hire a cleaning company before we spend how many hundreds of thousands of dollars to add something else on. The handicap ramp is, is just beyond. And, and when you hear that, well, we have seniors that go into the library, yes, they sure can't touch those ramps. They can't touch those hand, handicap railings. But just walk in and just look at the wire sticking out. You tell me what child's gonna get electrocuted going in the door there, you know? It's really time that we start looking at some of these things, especially for our kids in town, before they spend money needlessly. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. I'd just like to make a couple comments. The library is set back. I don't know how you can go past it every single day without going around. Second of all, second of all, they're trying to fix the library. It appears that the new ticket that is being run against the Democrats and the Republicans, everybody on the ticket is against the library. I'm glad the library is there, otherwise they'd have nothing to run for. I think this council is in favor of fixing that library. They want things done properly. They want things done, and I, and I don't disagree with that. Okay, and we're trying to do that. We're trying to add a room for the children. We're trying to take the room, the area that is for the children, use it for computers. And we're trying to make that library into something special, in which everybody here agreed upon. Uh, so we're going to do that. I have a motion to close the public portion of the meeting, please. It's closed. I'm just uh, to adjourn. I motion to close it, so it's not closed today. I want to ask. I take exception. I take exception to the fact that you just brought that up about a party. I'm asking everybody here to go to the next library meeting. I'm asking everybody here to take a look at what we just said. There's nothing that was said that is made up exaggerated or anything else. When I was there, I asked the people on the library board to walk with me. I have the pictures on my phone, if you'd like to see them, of the cobwebs, of the rusted faucet, of, of everything. I understand that you're a proponent of the library. I'm not, as we've said, we're not against a library. You just said you were. I, you said you were against Nobody the, said I was against the library. You said you were against the addition to the library. I'm against making the library bigger. Well, you make a library bigger when you have so many people that you can't hold them. Not when you have four people, you have six cars in the park, when you got 12 people that work on the library. 12. There's 12 people that work in the library. Four times. It's only three times, three full time. Well, 12 people work at the library. Four times. You got seven to eight hundred thousand dollars The place is a pigsty. Nobody works. The man that cleans it is because he's a good guy. I don't even know the guy. I don't care, but he's not doing his job. I ask, why can't he clean up on the top of the here? Well, then he's got to get on a ladder. What if he falls off? That was the reply. 
then you hire a cleaning company with an insurance plan. There's nothing here that we're saying, or that I've said, or that these people have said, that have anything to do with another party. Everything we've said is accurate, true. Please, I'd like to see all of you at the next library meeting. Point it out, look at it, tell me that we're wrong. Unless the mayor has somebody go over there and clean it all up before we get there, and even then, you can't fix the parking lot. It's going to look exactly like we said. Thank you. Okay. May I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, mayor, we have to go into executive session. Okay, read it. Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the governing body wishes to discuss potential litigation with EP United Soccer Club and litigation, Banano versus the Borough of Elmwood Park, minutes will be kept, and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires that confidentiality, then the minutes can be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the public be excluded from this meeting. Mayor, we'll need a motion to go into executive. Motion, please. So moved. Goncino, second. 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 Dombrowski, discussion. All in favor, opposed, so ordered. Thank you, Mayor.